Hi everyone, uh, my name is Hala Alian and I'm a Palestinian American clinical psychologist and writer. Uh, I've authored several collections of poetry and a novel and another one on its way. Um, I spent the month of October in 2018 in Paris um, and I had the distinct pleasure of being awarded a fellowship at the American Library of Paris. So not only was it just like a poignantly gorgeous time of year to be in Paris, but on top of that, I had this, like the luxury and the privilege of getting to spend that time with the wonderful people affiliated with the library, um, getting to know them, and then also having a space that I could call my own within the building. So I think virtually every day um, I would walk there or jog there and, and, and write for hours. And I've, I normally am not, I'm a like 30 minutes a day kind of gal, but there was something about that space and the city. And I think just being kind of immersed in the culture of the library um, that really gave me this like final push to, to do a significant portion of writing of the second novel, um, which I really feel like kind of came into its own during that month and like found its form and its voice. So I am unspeakably grateful to the American Library of Paris. And I just, um, yeah, it's just an institute that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, and I really hope to get to get to go back there soon. Um, I wanted to send some love to all the folks at the library um, and all of you watching this, you know, I know this is such a really confounding um, time and it's hard to sort of make sense of of what's happening and I would I would say that what I found successful as a strategy is to just kind of think of every day as like a little tent and you just live inside that tent um, and you can peek outside but for the most part like focus on your tent and and the days will pass and the weeks will pass and the months will pass and things will become clearer and we'll have more information um, and we'll have more of a direction of what the future is going to look like. Um, I know it's, it's, uh, it can be an unsettling time of uncertainty. And I know for me, seeking solace in writing, both in, in, in doing the act of writing and in sort of consuming others' writings, um, brings me a lot of comfort and, and sort of escapism. Um, and also reminds me again of like the temporality of things that like, you know, you can read something that was written several hundred years ago and feel super connected to it and then be reminded that like, oh, that was a period of time that is is both over and also timeless because it's been captured in this way. Um, and because I think time is kind of doing a funny thing these days, I, I, I find that reading has been helping with, with kind of conceptualizing that and finding a context for it. So anyway, that's enough of my rambling. I am going to, I'm thrilled to be part of this project. I'm going to be um, reading a couple of poems by James Emanuel. Um, there are some of Emanuel's uh, original works at the American Library of Paris. So definitely check it out the next time you're there. And I'm gonna read two poems. The first one is Francoise and the Fruit Farmer. In town to sell his fruit, he saw her. Francoise in her summer slacks, turning to him, coming back to feel the swelling plums, one held in each soft hand, breast high. Above them, her eyes enclosing him in quietness, brushed up to colors, urgings green, thrustings yellow. A vine-like touch, her promise seemed all profit, surplus to lay aside and store, Quick harvest, if he collapsed to stand, pulled down his crates, rolled away his canvas, full bounty if he washed his hands and followed, trailing her fragrances of melons in their prime, of berries bursting. She turned to go, her scent adrift, as if from glistenings in soil turned off a spade. His yearning had no time to plant and cultivate and wait for rain. Yet, he was quick, to catch a peach about to fall, that brightness of his wrist, costing the moment that concealed her in the crowd. And yet, a perfect peach lay in his hand, his only means to feel the way good seasons end. A lucky day, he thought, begins with plums. I love the simplicity of that poem. Not that the writing is, I mean, the, the, the simplicity of, of the moment. 
and how you can want something and that thing may not work, but then you're not empty handed after all. This piece is called False Notions, Fears, and Other Things of Wood. Repeatedly, that sturdy stump in me bears up like stone. Beneath some ritual I see, the blinding ax swings up, holds that moment of its weightlessness inscrutable. Till I confirm the arm is mine, I will it, grip, feel moist the swelling handle, the shudder rude, the difference fallen. Toward that chopping block, I carry in me wood things, infectious undergrowth, pretending upwards through each stem and branch of me, all so certain of themselves, they practice, like pains, the craft of being. May you all be practicing the craft of being these days. Thank you so much for watching this, and I wish you all well. Take care.